the right thing therefore acknowledge them acknowledge ye them that are sold not only the three people mentioned other people like them acknowledge them i pray god will make us forget ourselves and to acknowledge other people in jesus name give me the amen that show you will do it second corinthians chapter one i'm reading from verse 12 it says for our rejoicing is this look at paul talking about he is glad is happy is comforted is refreshed is rejoicing look at paul and think about yourself did you ever think that you need to be joyful and the people around you do they ever think you need to be joyful or do they just think that you're a bookworm only bible reader bible study and bible teacher bible student bible scholar give us some joy we need joy like paul the apostle says for our rejoicing is this the testimony of our conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity not with fleshly wisdom but by the grace of god we have had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you one look at verse 14 there in verse 14 it says as also ye have acknowledged us in part acknowledged us in part acknowledged us in part paul just coming out of the prison and then one of the members of the church met him and still was able that's my pastor yes was in the prison in philippi that's my pastor and then there were bodies fierce within and fighters without and yet when i meet him i'm so glad i acknowledge him i identify with him that is my minister that is my shepherd that's the one that helped me and brought me into the kingdom that's the one that helped me grow in in the grace of god it says as also ye have acknowledged us in part that we are your rejoicing look at that paul said here is what i appreciate that i see that you affirm that we the ministers are your rejoicing even as ye also are ours in the day of the lord jesus i pray god will grant us all this in our lives in jesus name second timothy chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 19 second timothy chapter 2 reading from verse 19 nevertheless the foundation of god standeth sure having their seal the lord knoweth them that are his and let everyone that nameth the name of christ depart from iniquity verse 21 if a man therefore perch himself from these if a christian will look inward and perch himself and perch herself from self-centeredness and perch himself and perch herself from ego and from self-consumption if a person will look inward and purge himself herself from self-satisfaction if a man therefore purge himself from this it shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work prepared unto every good work in verse 22 it says flee also youthful laws but follow righteousness faith charity peace with them that call on the lord out of a pure heart and then in verse 25 in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves you see that when people do right acknowledge them appreciate them tell them make practical action visible you've done well not only when they do wrong now when they do wrong you will instruct them in meekness 
They're fighting against their own interest. They're working against their own interest. And they're working against their own progress. But they don't know because they're looking at one direction. They're looking at how they did it yesterday. They're not looking at the present time. And they allow yesterday to spoil the challenges and the opportunities of today. And they're not looking at the future. Now, because you are not in their problem and you're not in their thoughts, you step back and you say, if my brother will look this direction, He'll make progress faster towards the future. If my brother will add something in to what he's doing today, he'll be better than what he was yesterday. Now, if I were wrong and somebody wanted to speak to me, how will I accept? Well, I accept if the person came to me and bullied me and shouted on me and pushed me and said, I'm trying to tell you, if you don't take my word, you're going to, you know, make a mess of your life. How will I feel if somebody talks to me like that? The way you want other people to correct you, the same way you correct other people. In meekness, in gentleness, in love, in lowliness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God, for adventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth the lord help every one of us to grow in grace in jesus name i'm waiting for a good amen. amen number two now number two aquila and priscilla with trustworthy brethren in all churches first corinthians chapter 16 verse 19 the churches officials salute you aquila and priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. And then in verse 20, it tells us, All the brethren greet you, greet you one another with a holy kiss, not with a lustful kiss, sinful kiss, sensual kiss, with a holy keys if the keys will not produce holiness will not generate holiness will not sponsor holiness will not produce holiness and will not increase holiness then don't do it only if your way of greeting and your style of greeting and your habit of greeting will promote holiness will produce holiness will project holiness and will purify the people and they remain holy that's the style of greeting you ought to have now we're looking at three things there. number one christ-like commitment to the preacher's perfection christ-like commitment to the preacher's perfection number two consuming consecration with persevering paul consuming consecration with persevering paul number three is commendable contribution for purposeful preservation let's come to number one christ-like commitment to preachers perfection we're coming to acts chapter 18 here we're meeting uh, aquila and priscilla husband and wife christian consecrated christian committed christians devoted christians and people who are always looking as to help other people and making them better look at acts chapter 18 verse 24 and a certain jew named apollos born at alexandria an eloquent man mighty in the scriptures came to ephesus in verse 25 it says this man was instructed in the way of the lord being fervent in the spirit he spake and taught diligently the things of the lord look at his limitation only knowing only understanding only and digging deep only into the baptism of john that was his limitation he knew much about repentance but not much about regeneration 
He knew much about restitution, which John the Baptist had taught, but he didn't know much about redemption. He knew much that John had taught, but he didn't know much about what Jesus had taught. He didn't know about the death and burial of Jesus Christ that brings us salvation. He didn't know about the grace of God that makes us free from sin and makes us to live a righteously holy life. Yes, it was, it was a real student of the Bible, but only knowing the baptism of John. That was its limit. That was the ceiling of his knowledge about the sanctification that Jesus prayed for. He didn't know about that. About the Holy Ghost baptism. He didn't know about that. About the riches of the grace of God according to what Christ had done on the cross of Calvary. He didn't know about that. But he knew only, only the baptism of John. Here is where Aquila and uh, Priscilla, here is where they come in. Look at the next verse now. It tells us in verse 26, and he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had died, they knew, they heard, they could see about his fervency, about his might about his youthful energy in declaring the word of God, about his boldness and about his being mighty in the scripture. But then they knew his size was not beyond the stature of John the Baptist. Therefore, Aquila and Priscilla took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. He knew the way of God to a limit, but now they took him and they expanded the word of God, expounded the word of God, exalted him, enlightened him, and moved him forward to perfect his knowledge in the Lord. Christless commitment to the perfection of preachers they made and that is an example for you an example for me that when we look at others the new converts or maybe not those who are too new they have been in the Lord from the time of John the Baptist because John the Baptist had died now for some years this chapter 18 of, uh, of Acts of the Apostles and John the Baptist died before the Lord Jesus Christ many years have passed before this Acts chapter 18 and yet the man was limited and they brought him up so that they can perfect his knowledge in the Lord that's what God is calling us to do when you see other people they are Christians maybe they are preachers maybe they are soul winners maybe they are Christian workers but they're limited in their knowledge then you draw them near and you give them material you might point them to materials we have already on our website the materials we have already on our YouTube the materials you have yourself and then that word will perfect them Colossians chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 28 Colossians chapter 1 we're reading from verse 28 whom we preach, warning every man, not only Apollos, but every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom. We're warning every man, and we're teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man, look at that, every man, every man, every man, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. When our group pastors are preaching to our members, our workers in the group, that's the intention to perfect every man in Christ Jesus. And when our overseers are preaching the word, maybe they have been Christians for many, many years, and yet we are revealing to them what they still need to know so that we will present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. And when you have the chance, the opportunity, or the, you know, the service to another person to teach them the word of God that will perfect their knowledge, that will perfect their decision, that will perfect their consecration, that will perfect their yieldedness and absolute surrender to 
of the Lord that you may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Look at number two here. It's a consuming consecration with persevering for. It tells us in Romans chapter 16, and we're reading from verse 3. Romans chapter 16, verse 3. Greet Priscilla and Aquila. Priscilla and Aquila. Here they come again. Why? My helpers in Christ Jesus. Apollos, who did not have enough knowledge like them, they helped him. Paul the Apostle, who had revelation above them, they helped him. And so you look at yourself, those who are lower than you in a Christian fold, how do you help them to perfect them? You look at those who are at par with you. They have the same knowledge. They have the same opportunity. And what do you do to them? Still to help them. You look at those who are higher than yourself in spiritual things. What do you do? Like Priscilla and Aquila, still to be of help to them. In uh, verse 4, it says in verse 4, Who oh, have for my life laid down their own necks. For my life laid down their own necks. Actually, they were not security officers, but they made themselves even bodyguards for the Paul, the apostle. Anything that will touch his life, anything that will come in, we cannot run as fast as he is running. We cannot get to the peak of the mountain that he has got to. We cannot reach the regions beyond that he is reaching. And we need to protect him and preserve his life. And therefore, rather than endanger the life of Paul the Apostle, they would rather come in front of him, come beside him, so that they will lay down their very life, even for Paul the apostle they had this consuming consecration for the preservation for the protection of paul the apostle who have for my life laid down their own necks unto whom not only i give thanks but also all the churches of the gentiles look at verse 5 it says likewise greet the church that is in their house Greet the church that is in their house. Paul the Apostle had gone to Corinth, had gone to Philippi, had gone to all those places to preach the word of God. And then when those converts are brought together, and Paul the Apostle had gone to another place, these people, Aquila and Priscilla, will provide their house as a place of worship so that the preservation of the converse can be handled very well. Number three here. Number three is uh, talking about the commendable contribution for purposeful preservation purposeful preparation that's why they give their churches that's why they gave what they had so that those converts will come together and they will preserve them in the Lord in the faith in first Corinthians chapter 16 reading from verse 19 it says the churches of Asia salute you Aquila and Priscilla Salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house, the church in their compound, the church in their quarters, the church in their institution. Whatever they had, whatever large, whatever personal space they had, they gave that to the preservation of the converts in the church. And that is what the Lord is expecting from you and from me. That whatever we have, we submit and we surrender for the preservation of the people of God so that the watch of Christ will be fulfilled. In Matthew chapter 16, reading from verse 18. Matthew chapter 16, reading from verse 18. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell 
shall not prevail against it. And that's uh, what Aquila and Priscilla had in mind, so that those converts, those believers, those babes in Christ, and those members of the church that do not have a place to gather for the minister, for the preacher, for the pastor shepherd to be ministering to them, they provided their house so that temptation will not, over, will not overwhelm those converts and difficulties and challenges will not overwhelm them. The church will be preserved. I pray that whatever you have, whatever I have, whatever we have, we surrender to the church so that the converts, the members, the disciples will be preserved in Jesus' name. Your amen is always weak. God bless you. That amen is good. Now, point number three. Point number three now, affection of Paul for true believers in Christ. The affection of Paul the Apostle for true believers in Christ. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 16, and we're reading from verse 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, reading from verse 21. The salutation of me, Paul, with my own hand. Look up here. Paul the Apostle, very serious and, you know, corrective in everything from chapter 1. I hear concerning you. There's division among you. I want to let you know that the church is one and you should be united. I hear some of you are saying, Paul, Apollos, and, and this and that. Is Paul crucified for you? The man was hard on them because he wanted them to come together and be united. And then he comes to chapter 2, chapter 3. You're still babes. I couldn't even talk to you as matured people. Now, he laid it on them. And now it's about to end the epistle. And he said, Corinthians, you know what? I greet you. My salutation, the salutation of me, Paul, with my own hand. You know, sometimes you look at these uh, preachers, pastors, overseers, shepherds, we never see them greet anybody. They're, very, they're thinking about the second coming of the Lord, Paul did. They're thinking about the rapture, Paul did. They're thinking about the many things to correct in the church, Paul did, and they're thinking of many things that still need to be done about their marriage, about the understanding of this, understanding of that. They're thinking of setting the people right in resurrection. Paul did, but he didn't forget to greet the people. Let there be fellowship. Let there be understanding. Let there be interaction. Let them understand that everything we preach, everything we say, is to prepare them for heaven. But in preparing them for heaven, we don't want to make them miserable here on earth. We want to see as much as possible how they interact with us, how they connect with us, how they are happy with us. The salutation of me, Paul, with my own hands let us add that human aspect to our interaction with the people of god and the whole, the lord help you in jesus name and then in verse 22 it says if any man love not the lord jesus christ let him be anathema maranatha and in verse 23 it says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Yeah. Verse 24, it says, my love. Ah, Paul, you have love? I thought you know, you're only for doctrine. I thought you're only for, you know, take the hammer, raise it high, and crush everything that should not be there in Corinth. Yes, I'll do that. And yet, you have to do that in love. And he says, my, my love be with you all. All those argumentative people, all those uh, disaffectionate people, all those uh, people who are confrontational, all of you, no exception, my love with you all in Christ Jesus. And the church said, 
I pray that the love of God will prevail in my heart, in your heart, in our hearts together in Jesus' name. The affection of Paul for true believers in Christ. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, address and greetings from Paul, the apostle, apostle of Christ. Number two, anathema for gainsayers against Christ. Number three, abundance of grace for all in Christ. Let's look at number one, address and greetings from the apostle of Christ. It says, my salutation, the salutation of me, Paul, with my own hand. Now, who is this Paul? It's the apostle of Christ. Look at chapter one, verse one. In first Corinthians chapter one, verse one, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ, an apostle not of Corinth, an apostle not of Galatia, an apostle not of Philippi, an apostle not an apostle made by Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and sustains our brother. In Galatians chapter 1 verse 1, Galatians chapter 1 verse 1, Paul, an apostle not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Look at verse 10. For do I not persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? If I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. He knew himself all the time that he was the apostle of Christ, a servant of Christ, a bond slave of Christ, and it was to fulfill only the will of God. See yourself like that anywhere you are. You are a child of God, you are a saint one, a servant of Christ, and you are a member, a sheep of the shepherd Christ, and therefore you comport yourself everywhere you are, everywhere you go, in that understanding that you are a servant of God. We're coming to number two here. Number two, it says in verse 22 of that first Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22, it says, if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. This point number two, anathema for gainsayers against Christ. What does that mean? Anathema. In the original language, anathema mean, means let him be accursed. Maranatha means the Lord cometh. Join those two words together. Let him be accursed. Our Lord cometh to execute judgment. The judgment denounced. Come back to that verse again. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, any man, understand Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle was a man of different capacities, different culture, and different tribe, and different environment. Before he came to the Lord, the Pharisees were part of his life, and he was part of their lives. And they hated Christ. They did not love the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that with them, he persecuted the believers. Now he's born again. Now he's reconciled unto God. Now he's a child of God. He loves the Lord Jesus Christ now. But there are still Pharisees, there are still Pharisees and Sadducees who do not love the Lord Jesus Christ. They were his old friends, but nevertheless, he has to declare the truth. If any man here on earth, if any man among the Jews, if any man among my king's men in the flesh do not love the Lord Jesus Christ and they curse him, and they reject him and they cast as passions on him whoever they are even if they were my friends when i was a pharisee myself if any man love not the lord jesus christ let him be accursed anathema maranatha when christ comes he will judge him if any man 
who claims to be in the church were Paul the apostle. And then, even though he's in the church, because of the hatred he has for Paul, and he feels that Paul the apostle is suffering for what he did before he became a Christian, and therefore be preaching a kind of gospel, the gospel of envy, and the gospel of uh, animosity, and the gospel of hatred, and he will not declare the word of Christ uh, justifiably. As Jesus died on the cross, he said, if any man, even in the church, if he does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema. He circles. And when the judgment of God comes, Christ is coming. Judgment will come upon him. There were people who were running around and they preached another gospel and they had another spirit and they were not declaring the word of salvation and they were not being faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ who gave his life and who gave every and for the salvation of the world, they do not love Christ and they do not affirm the words of Christ. They do not sympathize with Christ on the cross of Calvary who suffered so much and said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? If there's any man like that, a false prophet only pleasing himself and is not pleasing the Lord, is preaching a gospel that doesn't make people to love the Lord with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. The Lord is coming. That's why it said in Galatians chapter 1, reading from verse 8. Galatians chapter 1, reading from verse 8. And it said, though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which were preached unto you, let him be a cause, anathema. In verse 9, it says, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man of whatever persuasion, any man of whatever denomination, if any man even of our own congregation, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, than that ye have received, let him be a cause, Anathema. That means the Lord is putting that person under the curse of not loving the Lord. And Maranatha, the Lord is coming. In Jude chapter 1, reading from verse 14. Jude chapter 1, reading here from verse 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of this saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. What's he coming to do? In verse 15, it says to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. They don't love him. They speak against him. Verse 16, it says, These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, it tells us, remember, how the apostles told us that there should be mockers in the last days who should walk after their own ungodly laws. Verse 19, these be they who separate themselves. They won't identify with those who are preaching the whole word of God. They will not identify themselves with those who consecrate and sacrificially serve the Lord in love. They separate themselves, the essential having not the spirit. Judgment comes upon them eventually. But today, we can approach them and convince them and preach to them, earnestly pleading with them to repent and to love the Lord 
and the love of God will come to them. The grace of God will come. The Lord will forgive them in Jesus' name. But if they continue not loving the Lord until the very end, then anathema, maranatha, they'll be cursed and the Lord will come and he'll bring judgment unto them. Number three now. Number three, abundance of grace for all in Christ. For you. Amen. For me. And for all of us in Jesus' name. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. In a time of temptation, in a time of trial, in a time of difficulty, at your crossroads, in the time of sickness, in a time of pressure, in a time when you don't know what to do, the Lord will come to you. Yeah. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will be with you. Yeah. When you feel all alone and you are lonely, when you feel helpless and powerless, when it appears things have turned upright, upside down, when it appears that your mountain looks Im immovable, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. When some things happen in your life that arouse something like anger, and it's like, you know, you want to, you are tempted to jump on them and beat them and push them away, and you are tempted to act like you are not, uh, you know, sanctified, the grace of God will come to you. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. When you have a challenge, a mountain to climb, a work to do, a duty to perform, and you don't have the wisdom, you don't have the skill, you don't have the ability, and you don't know what you are going to do. When, you, when it looks like you are coming to the end of your way, and it's like, you know, the devil is saying, you will finish that Christian life midway, you will not go to the end. Then the grace of God will show up. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will be with you. And my love be with you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Grace and love, grace and mercy, grace and compassion, and grace and provision abundant in your life all the days of your life in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let the grace of God overflow all that anxiety, all that problem, all that difficulty. Let the grace of God come and that grace of God is always available. You will be who God has called you to be.
Lord, we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Tonight, we are asking that your presence will be mightily felt in our midst. And you will bless us mightily tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. We are still praying. I want you to personally open your voice and bless the name of the Lord for the privilege God has given unto you for you to be among the living and for you to be among the saints to attend the Bible study today. Can you open your mouth and give God the glory? In Jesus' name, we pray. A louder amen. If you are here and you're expecting to learn something today at the feet of Jesus, I want you to commit yourself unto the Lord and ask God that the Lord will open your eyes of understanding. That as you are here tonight, the word of God will have meaning unto you. That what you are going to study, what will be taught here tonight, you will benefit, and then you will be doers of the world. Open your mouth and pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Now Paul wrote to Timothy, he says, ever learning, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You are going to pray tonight that as you come to the Bible study and all that you have been learning, the Lord will give you the grace that the truth will be revealed unto you. And you, as you learn the word of God, the word of God will be evidence in your life, will be evidence in your conduct, will be evidence in your character. Pray that, Lord, I want to be the dwarfs of the world. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Two of the disciples, they were on their way, and Jesus met them. The white Jesus was having discussion with them. They could not understand. They could not recognize Jesus. Until Jesus opened their eye, and Jesus opened their understanding, and then they recognized Jesus. Tonight, you are going to pray as you sit at the feet of the master to learn tonight. God will open your spiritual eye. God will give you understanding of his word. That every word that has been taught here tonight, by the grace of God, you will understand the word. Pray that God, give me understanding of your word tonight. That whatsoever that is being taught here tonight, I will understand your word. Can you pray that prayer with all your heart? Pray. The Lord will give you understanding of his world. Let us pray that God's anointing, God's unction, will rest upon our GX tonight as it teaches us the world. God will give him utterance. God will give him boldness. And he will declare unto us and show us the mystery of the kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight because you have brought us here. And we are here for a purpose. And we believe that you are going to impart great things into our life.
through your word, through your servant tonight. And we are asking, oh God, the grace to receive and the grace to be the dwarfs of the world. You will grant unto every one of us in Jesus' name. A brethren that are still on the way, we pray that you will quicken their step and make the way free for them so that they will join us and partake of the blessing tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you because you have heard our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Shall we pray? Our dear Lord in heaven, we want to thank you, Lord, for our gathering this evening. We want to thank you, Lord, for your enabling grace that has made it possible for us to be here. And Lord, we are asking and praying that the grace to hear this word tonight and be doers of it, you will grant unto us in Jesus' name. Dear Lord in heaven, we pray that our lives tonight will be transformed better than when we came here in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you've answered. For in Jesus' name we pray. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. That was laid. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Praise the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. That was slain. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Praise the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Praise the Lamb forever, O oh Lord. Thy word is set to in heaven, it is set to forever, 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 O oh Lord. Thy word is set to in heaven, it is set to forever, 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 O oh Lord. Thy word is set to in heaven, it is set to forever, forever, O oh Lord. Thy word is set to in heaven, it is set to hallelujah for the Lord. God, all many potent reigneth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah for the Lord. God, all many potent reigneth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah for the Lord God, O millipotent reigneth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. My light must shine. The light of God must shine. No matter the darkness, the light of God must shine. The light of God must shine, no matter the darkness, the light of God must shine. My light 
My light must shine, the light of God must shine. No matter the darkness, the light of God must shine. Who be the next? Who be the next? Who be the next to follow Jesus? Who be the next to follow Jesus Christ? Follow Jesus now. Who be the next? Who be the next? Who be the next to follow Jesus? Who be the next to follow Jesus Christ? Follow Jesus now. I'll be the next. I'll be the next. I'll be the next to follow Jesus. I'll be the next to follow Jesus Christ. I'll follow Jesus Christ. Who be the next? Who be the next? Will you be the next? To follow Jesus, will you be the next to follow Jesus now? Follow Jesus now. Dwelling together, how happy we shall be throughout eternity, for we shall dwell. Together, my Lord and I, hallelujah. Throughout eternity, for we shall dwell together. Amen. You're welcome to night Bible study 
in Jesus name it's a manner to welcome those that are coming to our meals for the first time if tonight is your first time of attending our service a Monday Bible study anywhere you are can you signify by waving your hand or you stand up wherever you are for recognition You can stand up so that we can see you. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Uh, Pastor is very happy that you are here. And he wants me to tell you that you should keep on coming. And as God has used you to bless multitude of people you have seen, God will use you to bless you also in Jesus' name. Our ushers are by your side. They will give you a sleep, receive it, fill it, and give all the necessary information, and then you can take your seat. Three times in our church, we have different activity. On Monday like this, we have a Monday Bible study, which commences by 5.50. And then on Thursday, we have a Thursday Adventurism training service and the time is 6 p.m. And on Sunday, we have our Sunday worship service which commences by 7.55. In all our various districts, you are expected to be there and attend all the meetings. As we do all this, the Lord will bless us more and more in Jesus' name. We are going to take our congregational in from hymn number 63. I'm thinking today of that beautiful land. I shall reach when the sun goes down. When through wonderful grace and my Savior I stand, will there be any stars in my crown? In the strength of the Lord, let me labor and pray. Let me wash as a winner of souls. The bright stars might be in the glorious day when his praise like the sea roll. Oh, what joy it shall be when his face I behold. Living chain at the feet to lay down. It will sweeten my breeze in the city of gold. Should there be any stars in my crown? Will there be any star, any star in my crown? When at even the sun's go down, when I work with the breaks in the mansion of wrecks, will there be any stars in my crown?
Today we are going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The fifth book of Moses, called Deuteronomy, chapter 7. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and have cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Pebrizites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him, and keep his commandments to a thousand generations, and repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he sware unto thy fathers, and he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb, and the fruit of thy land, thy corn, and thy wine, and thine oil. 
the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep in the land which he sware unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eye shall have no pity upon them, neither shalt thou serve their gods, for that will be a snare unto thee. If thou shalt say in thine heart, These nations are more than I, how can I dispossess them? Thou shalt not be afraid of them, but shalt well remember what the Lord thy God did unto Pharaoh and unto all Egypt. The great temptations which thine eyes saw, and the signs, and the wonders, and the mighty hand, and the stretched out arm, whereby the Lord thy God brought thee out. So shall the Lord thy God do unto all the people of whom thou art afraid. Moreover, the Lord thy God will send the hornet among them, until they that are left and hide themselves from thee be destroyed. Thou shalt not be affrighted at them, for the Lord thy God is among you, a mighty God and terrible. And the Lord thy God will put out those nations before thee by little and little, Thou mayest not consume them at once, lest the beasts of the field increase upon thee. But the Lord thy God shall deliver them unto thee, and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction, until they be destroyed. And he shall deliver their kings into thine hand, and thou shalt destroy their name from under heaven. There shall no man be able to stand before thee, until thou have destroyed them. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein for it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Chapter 8 All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord sware unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness, to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Thy raiment waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates a land of oil, olive, and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses, and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents, and scorpions, and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. And thou say in thine heart, My power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he sware unto thy fathers, as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish.
as the nations which the Lord destroyeth before your face, so shall ye perish, because ye would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Shall we put our hand in our bags and wallet as we offer our tithe and offering unto the Lord? Shall we raise it up as we pray together now? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of offering our tithe and offering unto you. We are asking, O oh God, that you receive it, bless it, I use it for the expansion of your kingdom here on earth. Bless all that are given tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Goodbye. 